Hi, this is QA Shahin, and today we're going to continue looking at find elements. So this is part two of the previous video. If you haven't seen the previous video, please go and check that out first, as the understanding in that video is a pre-requirement to this video. So in this video, we're going to continue looking at find element. We're going to briefly look at clicking on an element. So we did touch on this in the previous video, but in this video, we're going to look at it in a little bit more detail. And then we're going to look at a couple of other ways of identifying an element, which will then allow us to say pass text into that element. So what we're going to do is go to the test room and we're going to navigate down and click on this test web app. So really quickly, if you haven't subscribed to my blog site, please make sure you do so. I post a lot of stuff there. And this test site is a site that I've built for you to help you to write code. Now, on this site, as we talked about elements, we're not going to talk about that again, because I feel we've spent a lot of time on that already. We did say that this contact link, amongst other things, was an element. And we clicked on this contact link by identifying it based on the ID attribute. So we're going to click on that again. And that was where we left off the video. In this video, we're going to extend that by seeing if we can interact with this form here. So let's briefly look at maybe a couple of elements on this form and then see if we can interact with that. So going back down, so I am using Firefox and Firefox has this built-in tool that allows us to inspect elements. So one such way of inspecting is right-clicking and then saying inspect. But another way of inspecting elements is to select this element picker and then when you highlight over things, it automatically selects the corresponding HTML tags for you. So it's just another way of identifying an element on a web page. So in this event, I'm going to click on the first one, which is this one. So as we can see, this is of a type input tag element. It has an attribute of type with a value of text. It has a name attribute with a name underscore field value. And there's actually no values inside the input field, which makes sense because I haven't typed anything in. So what we're going to do is try and find some way of identifying this particular input field using WebDriver.js and then doing something with it. So in this case, I'm going to just go ahead and enter my name. And the next element that I think we will interact with is this address input field here. So again, this is very similar to the enter name input field. And by that, I mean it is also of type input field. And it also has a type attribute as well as a name attribute. But the one thing we can notice as a difference is that the enter field had a name underscore field as a value. And the address field has the address underscore field as a value. So they do, although they're very similar, they do have a distinctive difference. And by that, I mean the value of the name attribute is different between the two. So this adds some level of uniqueness between the two fields. So in the address field, I guess we'll enter some kind of address. Uh, I guess I'm going to say bat cave for now. Okay, so let's go and try to simulate this user journey. So the journey we're going to simulate is we're going to navigate on the site. We're going to click on the contact link and then we're going to pass text into the name field and the address field. And that's it. So this is where we left off our code when we last looked at it in the previous video. So again, please look at the previous video. If you haven't, you need to look at the previous video in order to understand how we got this far. So really quickly, we used this method called find element to find an element on a web page. We then used the by.id method to locate an element based on an ID attribute, which had a value of contact underscore link. 
So when we passed this into the find element method, WebDriver.js was able to locate the contact link on the home page. Once it did that, it was then able to click on that link. So we did say as part of this video, we're going to look at this really briefly. So clicking is a method that is part of WebDriver that you can invoke after you find an element. So once you find an element, you're able to use many different types of methods which allow actual interactivity with a web page. So in this event, the interactivity method we're using is click. So this basically simulates a mouse click. Okay, so as part of the flow here, what we now need to do is to use some other interactivity method to allow us to pass text. Right, so the first thing we want to do is interact with this enter name input field. So again, let's have a quick look. So this is of type input, it has a type and a name attribute. I guess for now we're going to go with the tag type. So the tag type of this is input. So similar to by ID, by has a number of different ways of identifying an element. In this case, we're going to use something different. So we're going to say element, And this time we're going to say by tag name. So what is tag name? When we look at these HTML tags, these are tags. So when we say tag name, it is the name of that tag. So for instance, this is a form tag. This is a H1 tag. This is a table tag and so on. So the tag we're interested at the moment is an input tag. So we're going to say input. So what this will do now is find the first input tag field it can, and then it will return it to the find element method. Now we said we want to pass text, similar to the click method, which actually simulates a mouse click. There is a method that simulates keyboard press, and that is called send keys. So what send keys does is it actually passes in the text that you want to pass in. So in this case, we're going to say Shahin. So what this will do now is actually pass in this text into the first field it finds, which happens to be input. And on the page, the very first field is this one. There are no other input fields above this. The next field we want to find is the address field. Now this time, let's not use input anymore. Let's use something different. Let's go ahead and try and use this name attribute instead. So this time what I want to do is again, element, And this time I want to say by name. And again, I'm going to use send keys and I'm going to pass it a value. And that's it. So what is happening here? So line nine and 10 are almost identical to line eight. But the difference is on line eight, we're using an attribute of type ID to find an element and then click on it. This time we're using tag name to identify a tag based on its name and a name attribute to find an element based on the attribute name, and then actually trying to use send keys, which simulates keyboard press keys on a field. So let's save this and run this and see what happens. Okay, and that was it. So as you can see, it was able to open up the browser, it navigated to the contact page, 
and then it populated the name field with Shahin and the address field with Batcave. So what did we cover in this video? So in this video we covered two more ways of trying to identify an element on a web page. First based by tag name and second based by name and then we were able to pass text to those fields. So between the first and the second video we now have enough information to actually have some level of interactivity with a web page. Thanks a lot for watching. I will see you in the next one.